Welcome back, Guardians. Today, we're diving into the world of PvE content in Destiny 2, focusing on what I think are the top 7 Hunter builds that will set you up to triumph over any challenge the game throws your way. As Hunters, we epitomize agility and precision, and with these meticulously crafted builds, you'll be poised to deliver devastating strikes to your enemies while evading their attacks with finesse. From swiftly eliminating hordes of foes to offering vital support for your fire team, these builds are finely tuned to excel in every PvE scenario Destiny 2 presents. So gather your fellow guardians, prepare your arsenal, and embark with us as we delve into the top 7 hunter builds tailored to dominate PvE content in Destiny 2. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. The first build we're taking a look at is the One Shot Solar build. This build has to be one of my favorite overall builds for hunters. It feels like classic Destiny since we get to use the Golden Gun. We are going to be using the Celestial Nighthawk, and this aim up our DPS to the max, giving us a super strong single shot in our golden gun. It did receive a nerf recently, but it still stands out as a heavy hitting option for raids and dungeons. So what's the flow? Well, the gameplay loop is pretty simple. Pop your healing grenade and start killing. The beautiful thing about solar is how easy it is to survive. Once you have restoration active, we use Ember of Empyrean to have any solar ability or weapon kill extend that restoration. And this also works for Radiant, which will be giving us a constant 25% more weapon damage. Pair that with weapon surge mods, and now you have consistent healing healing, consistent high damage, and consistent abilities. So what are some things we could do to improve it? Well, we pair mods with this build that will give more orbs by using our weapons and abilities. These orbs will help get back our golden gun, but also keep our weapon surge up, meaning we should consistently have at least 53% more damage for our weapons. And we bring solar weapons to have increased weapon damage, so when you pair it with a weapon like Sunshot or a weapon with Incandescent, you'll be melting everything around you, causing explosions left and right. This build excels in all forms of content because of how strong golden gun is. We can melt bosses with ease, but they have to have a crit. If the boss doesn't have a crit or you don't have a div user on the team, then we do have other options on this list that are better. Otherwise, this is probably one of the best options for DPS. The second build we're going to be taking a look at is a void build, and this is going to be our enter the shadows build. And this build honestly just feels fun to use. With how often and easy it is to go invisible, you get to pick and choose your engagements. And when you do come out of the shadows, you'll deal increased weapon damage with volatile rounds and empowerment. And because we have Devour, we get high uptime on our grenade and a constant source of health. Tack on the fact that we have a source of weaken in our back pocket, and it makes it easy to melt any targets in your way. The gameplay loop for this build is amazing. Dodge to gain invisibility, and that's pretty much it. You can improve this by finishing a target while invisible, which gives you an added 35% weapon damage boost and an overshield in your back pocket. If you don't have a dodge available, you can finish any target to go invisible and start the process. And the beautiful thing about this build is that once the gameplay loop is started, it naturally extends itself. Because we can weaken with our melee, we can do finishers, dodging, and weapon kills. All of these will give us invisibility, so we'll basically go invisible after killing any target just by playing the game. And since we get a 35% weapon empowerment buff just by finishing a target while we're invisible, we pair that with weapon surge mods to get a consistent 65% weapon damage buff, and then you tack on the fact that we also get volatile rounds just by exiting invisibility. So our weapons will be dealing massive damage to single and multi-targets. So we pair that with void weapons like the Graviton Lance for massive ad clear, or legendary options with repulsor brace for extra survivability, or you can even just do a damage perk to further increase your damage and amp it up to the max. The mods we bring make it so our abilities will fund into each other, making it super easy to use all of our abilities at a moment's notice. So where does this build excel? Well, I love this build for solo content. It definitely is good with a team too, though they might get mad at you for how much you go invisible and force them to take the damage. But everyone loves a tether, so at least you're helping with DPS phases. Next build we're taking a look at, I like to call the Shocking Shank. This is an arc based build that uses the Liar's Handshake. And what really makes it stand out is the amount of power that you get from a single melee. It really makes this build excel in Legend and Master level content. It's not quite GM level, but it does make running through Lost Sectors a breeze. The gameplay loop goes like this you dodge, you melee. You dodge, you melee. You dodge. Well, you know, you melee. Your melee starts to work up a counter that increases its damage every time you get a powered melee, which also refunds your dodge. We then dodge near a target to get back our powered melee. Meanwhile, because of our exotic liar's handshake, every other melee will deal an added 200% more damage. So basically every time you see that shank come out, that's the increased damage. This makes taking out champs super easy. If you get combination blow up to times three, 
normal melees will deal an extra 310% base damage. Add on your cross counter and you can deal a whopping 1,129% extra damage, which makes it super easy to one to two shot champions up through master level content. This is also amplified even further by lethal current, which will let you melee after dodging and apply jolt to the target, giving you the ability to clear out sections of adds with one melee. So how do we improve the build? Well, you get health back from cross counter and combination blow. We add in being surrounded will give us extra damage resistance and your survivability now skyrockets. I recently started using the indebted kindness, which is a sidearm that rolls with volt shot to take this really to the next level. This weapon causes jolt and when you jolt, you become amplified. Once you're amplified, we use the fragment spark of beacons to cause blinding explosions by killing with this weapon, making it easier to clear ads and blind bigger targets for easier melees. You intrinsically can deal with overload champions from all of your ways to jolt. If you bring this sidearm, you can deal with barriers, or you can bring a primary to deal with unstoppable champs, making this build super easy and convenient for any champion activity. I like to pair this with arc weapon surge mods, to help melt through targets in higher level content, which is why this is my go-to build for legend and master level lost sectors. It almost feels a little too strong for normal content, but you could definitely use it in normal content. Moving on to our next build, we are taking a look at a strand option with the decoy assassin build. So what makes it stand out? Well, strand hunter is such a fun option for general gameplay. I really love how our decoy takes all of the enemy's attention. And I like to pair that with assassin's cow to make it so that I never get targeted by enemies. With just that alone, we have high survivability, but with strand we gain woven mail to take an even more 45 percent less damage and if you want to get really crazy you can bring the buried bloodline to gain devour and gain even more health and grenades well the flow of this build is really easy use any ability to break the line of sight from enemies and that's because i use the grapple grenade so our grenade and power melee will make us invisible and our dodge will create a decoy and you have two options as far as the aspect is concerned i like widow silk so that I can have two grapples and go invisible whenever I want. Alternatively, you can take Whirling Maelstrom so that you can throw tangles and create Beyblades that rip through enemies. One adds more damage and one adds more survivability, so pick whichever one fits your playstyle. And I'm absolutely in love with Unraveling Rounds. They help do more damage, they keep targets unraveled, and they spread damage to many targets. So we bring the aspect Thread of Propagation to gain Unraveling Rounds from all of our sources of melees. We then bring a Strand Weapon to take advantage of these Unraveling Rounds, as well as Strand Weapon Surge mods to further our damage even more. With our fragments and mods and all of our abilities, and even just sources of damage, we help refund our abilities, making it hard to run out of all of our abilities. Bring a weapon with Hatchling or just shoot the target that's unraveled this season, and we'll create Threadlings that will deal extra damage from Thread of Evolution. This build is a top tier build. While it definitely lacks in terms of DPS for bosses, it's strong in all levels of content for generic gameplay, both with a team and solo. And that brings me to my next build, which is a very good option for any and all scenarios. That's gonna be the Starry Blades build. While our first build with Golden Gun can output more DPS, this option still outputs very high DPS. And it doesn't matter about hitting a crit. We take Star Eater scales to amp up our blade barrage for the DPS phases. Since Solar has Restoration and Radiant, this build is strong enough to keep you alive and melt through targets without the need of an exotic on a regular basis. So what's the flow for this build? Well, it's the same as before. You pop your healing grenade to gain Restoration. Powered melees will give you Radiant and then keep killing with solar weapons or abilities to extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant. Since Ember of Mercy is finally getting a fix, we will be taking it to start the restoration process in case you don't want to run the healing grenade. And this also means that in easier content, you can drop the healing grenade for a solar grenade. Your solar weapons will deal extra damage with Weapon Surge and Radiant, so taking a solar primary and heavy is your best option. I like weapons with Incandescent for extra damage, melee energy, and healing with Fire Sprites. You can use your weapons or melee to create orbs that feed into Star Eater Scales and will give you Weapon Surge. Blade Barrage does some of the highest DPS a super has to offer, especially when paired with Star Eater Scales, and Knock Em Down. And since we have Knock Em Down, whenever we are Radiant, our melee is instantly refunded whenever we kill with it, making it super easy to keep throwing your knives. This build excels in all content. Blade Barrage only becomes hard to use on bosses that are super far away or very small hitboxes, which there aren't that many. Our high DPS means that we can melt in raid and dungeon scenarios with all of our healing and weapon damage, so we can bring it either solo or in team content. And since there is that pesky option of having a boss that is pretty far away or super small, we have one more option for DPS, and that's going to be my Starry Staff build. 
I love my solar builds as the best options for DPS, but in reality, surges do exist for some activities. So in the case you have an arc surge, this is your best option for dealing high boss DPS and clearing rooms of ads. With Star Eater scales, Gathering Storm does slightly less damage than that of Golden Gun and Blade Barrage. However, in an arc surge environment, it does output more DPS, which is why we will take it for those scenarios, or if we have a boss that is super far away or pretty hard to hit. So what's the flow for this build? Well, it works very similar to our Liar's Handshake build. However, the trade-off is less melee damage, making it harder to deal with champions, but easier to output more damage on the boss. So you dodge and then melee to work up your combination blow, and in the process clear out pockets of adds. Or you can just use your weapons with weapon surge to take out enemies at a distance. I love taking weapons with volt shot for this build that lets you clear out pockets of adds near and far away. We can use our weapons and melee to generate orbs, which will help get back our super and feed into star eater scales, plus give us weapon surge. If you want to amp up your damage in DPS phase is even further, you can swap out your dodge for Marshman's dodge with the trade-off of less melees in regular play. While I like Volt Shot weapons for this build, you can easily swap out for any heavy and then match your primary and weapon surge mods to your heavy to make this build even more dynamic in case there are different heavy weapons that you want to use for a boss phase. So where does this build excel? Well, this builds a little bit more plug and play, allowing you to bring any weapons you want while still dealing good damage in boss phases. It isn't as strong as its solar counterparts, but it will surpass them in surge environments. So it does work both in team play or in solo play. And that brings me to our seventh build, our last build, which is going to be a GM build. Some Grandmaster Nightfalls can be very hard to complete, mainly ones that throw a ton of ads at you or force you into an enclosed area. Some of the best GM builds focus on one thing, using your super as much as possible, which is why we're using the Orpheus rig for this build. If you have teammates that are using exotics that help get their super back, you can feed off of each other's supers to have a super active nearly all the time. This is super powerful with something like Phoenix Protocol and a Well of Radiance Warlock. As you play more GMs, you'll learn the spawns of enemies and when the best time is to use a super, though it's almost not really necessary with this build. If you hit a group of enemies, you're likely to get back half of your super, and when you need it, you have quick fall in your back pocket, making you and your allies invisible. When you kill with your primary, secondary, or grenade, you'll get back orbs, leading to even quicker supers. If you get into trouble, you can always finish a target to go invisible, which can be handy for resing teammates. I really like to pair this with a strong primary like Wish Ender. Alternatively, you can bring a weapon for stunning champions that has either Thresh or Attrition Orbs for even more super energy. And since we have Devour, we use our grenades to refund all of our other abilities. I would stack my stats into Intellect the most that I can without going crazy. I like to shoot for roughly 70, while I keep my resilience at 100. And then I also go for Discipline and Strength as much much as possible after I've already hit 70 and 100 with resilience and intellect. This build excels as a GM build because of how often you can use your super. This really helps out clear rooms of enemies and helps your team get back their supers to continue the cycle of super spam. And there you have it, Guardians. We've covered the top 700 builds for PvE content in Destiny 2, each one meticulously crafted to empower you in your journey. Remember, mastering these builds is only the beginning. Experiment with different combinations, tweak your loadouts to suit your playstyle, and never stop honing your skills. Whether you're tackling raids, strikes, or other challenging activities, these builds will help set you up for success, giving you more damage, more survivability, and more importantly, more fun. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next adventure, Guardians.